Hello! This week's first topic is separable ODs. So let's go look right into it. The idea as you, is that you can separate the two variables of the OD. So one variable is the unknown function that we're looking for. The other is the time. Sometimes we call it T, sometimes we call it X. The variable doesn't matter, it's the independent variable. So if you're looking at y prime x equal 5x, the unknown is y and x is the time. This is a separable OD. And I'm going to walk you through the steps to see why it's separable and what being separable helps us with. So if we write y prime not as a function of x, we can actually replace y prime as dy over dx. And once you write it as dy over dx, it happens that you can separate the dy and the dx and place it in different places. Actually looking at this as a fraction. It's called Lagrangian formalism, if you're interested in looking it up. But the general gist of it is that now this dy and this dx that are constructed as a fraction can be moved around working on them as we usually do with variables. So we can displace the dx from under the fraction to on the other side of the equation. If you can write an equation in which on one side you have something, something, something multiplied dy and on the other something, something, something multiplied dx and you have all the x's on one side and all the y's on the other side, then you say that the OD is separable. And if your OD is separable, you can integrate both sides. Automatically, you understand that the integral on the left is the integral over dy, while the integral on the right is the integral over dx. And you can construct a solution. So can we be a bit more precise and look at when is an OD separable precisely? So we have this first, first writing of an ODE as a big function f of x, y, y prime, and other things equal to zero. So first of all, ODEs are separable only if they are first order. So f must be only a function of x, y, and y prime. If you are able to rewrite your ODE in the form in which you have, on one hand, a function of y multiplied by y prime and on the other hand a function of x and only x then you're talking about separable because what you can do is the thing we did before replace y prime with dy dx and integrate on the both sides so you have one section one side of your equal that is an integral of something that only depends on y dy and on the other side an integral of something that only depends on x dx. As a, if you're looking at the formulation ny dy equals mx dx you can backtrace it creating the Lagrangian formalism either on one side or on the other. So you can write ny dy equal mx dx either as ny y prime equals to m of x. And here you're expecting y to be a function of x, but you can also flip things around and look at ny equals mx x prime, in which case you're thinking of x as a function of y. So when you're doing separable ODs, you have this occasion in which you can flip things around. Sometimes this actually makes things way more complicated, but it's a, it's a good to remind yourself that we, when you're looking at separable ODs, both roads are possible. So you have to force your solution to go towards the right direction. So let's look at some examples. x, y prime equals to 5. Is it separable? 
Well, we can rewrite it as y prime equals 5 over x. So it is. Is y prime cos x plus y sine x equal to 7, is it separable? It's not, because we can wiggle things around, but we never get to the situation in which on one side we only have a function of y times y prime, and on the other side only a function of x. There, there is too much intermingling for us to be able to just separate it. So no, this equation cannot be separated. This is when we're solving x y prime equals to 5 we can look at y prime equal to 5 of x so let's try to solve this as before with the lagrangian formalism of writing dy over dx we can move dx on the other side and we can take integrals of both sides so we get on one hand just the integral of dy that is y and on the other hand, 5 over x dx. We integrate on both sides, and the constant pops up because the boundary of our intervals are not defined. So we have y equals to 5 logarithm of x plus c. Sometimes this explanation is a bit unclear because where is this constant c coming from? So let's look at it in a different way. Let's integrate with some bounds. So if we're integrating between 1 and x, both sides, on one hand we have that y becomes a function of x and the integral on the left becomes y function of x minus y1 and the integral on the right is 5 log x minus 0. So if we shift things around we have y of x equals 5 log x plus y1. y1 was actually chosen independently. We could have chosen other values of x at which to start our integral, and we don't know it. So we can replace y1 with the constant we saw before. So this is an extra justification of why these constants are popping up. So let's look at a new example of a separable ODE. Is this equation separable? We have on one hand a fraction between y prime plus 5y divided x squared plus, x plus 3x and on the other just a constant 2. We can switch things around and we can find a situation in which everything on the right depends on x, everything on the left depends on y. But it's still not separable because the thing on the left it's y prime plus 5y. It's not a function of y times y prime. So we're not able to do the, the Lagrangian formalism and the rewriting in the correct form. So let's try again. Is this new equation separable? y prime equals a fraction in which everything on the top depends on x and everything on the bottom depends on y. Yes, it is separable. We can multiply everything by the denominator, so 2y minus 1, and we have something that on the left only depends on y multiplied by y prime, and on the right only depends on x. So we can do the steps as before, rewriting y prime as dy over x, displacing the dx, integrating on both sides, and making the integral. But now we have a solution that is y second plus 2y equals something depending on x plus a constant. This is not the formulation we would want. What we would want, but we don't have yet, is writing y as a function of x. Here we're not writing y as a function of x directly, we're hiding it between this y second minus 2y equals something. So we want to solve this out. And we can solve for, for y, and we find that yx, applying the rules of the parabola, is this fraction between 2 plus or minus square root of 4 minus 4 parentheses minus x to the 3 minus 2x to the 2 minus 2x minus c, all of this divided by 2. 
We can simplify things a little bit. And now we have an explicit formulation of y with respect to x. But we still have some unknowns in this. So y x is equal to 1 plus or minus square root of something, something, something plus c. Both the plus and minus and the c are choices you can, we can make to fit a different function in the solution. In order to restrict to only one solution, we need an initial condition. We need to know the value of y of x at a certain time. If we can fix this, then we can fix both c and plus and minus. By the way, we can fi fix c the most easily when we're looking at this previous equation before the application of the square of the squares of the square roots. But with the initial condition, then we have a unique solution. Before the application of the initial condition, before knowing which of the many possibilities you have to track, then you have a variety of options, enclosed in this constant and this plus and minus sign. 